This conference will now be recorded. So again, we're in Chelech Bet, part two, uh, Perek Shvi, the seventh chapter, Hashbat HaKochavim, the influence of the stars. And we started to discuss the idea of Mazal, which is mistranslated as luck. Mazal means that which flows down to us, not based upon our actions. Certain things come about as a result. We've been discussing, we shake the rope down here, Yaakov, Chevel, Nachalato. The rope shakes up to the top of the gym ceiling, and then it works its way back down. It works up to the Shorashim, and then it comes back down to us. There is also something else that is Mazal. Mazal is that which flows down to us, not as a result of our actions, right? Our parents, our situation, how good looking Uzi is, all of these <laughs> things are not based upon our actions, but this is something that flowed down. The Gemara says that before a person is born, a bat call, a heavenly voice emanates and pronounces what we would call the mazal of this person. Will this person be rich or poor? Will the person be strong or weak? Will the person be wise or simple? The, that is basically the raw materials that are given to the person. Those are the, the cards that are dealt to the person. And ein hakol bidei shamayim chutz shamayim. Everything is in the hands of the heaven, except for the fear of heaven, the awe of God. Everything is there except for how you play the cards. And that is what makes you the person. And you have a very simple person who learns this much. And you have a very wise person who learns that much. But in terms of real measurement in the world to come, we take away their starting point. And we see this one gained this, and this one gained that. Even though he started here and got there, and he started here and got there. But take away the starting point, and where did they get to? So that is the idea of mazal. It is connected to the kochavim. That is connected to the stars. Now, when we say the stars... Right? There are some things of horoscope, and, but it's not that the stars have any power, of course. And it's not the stars, the physical bodies, those planets that, or those suns that are at a very great distance that we call stars. But it is the, as we've been explaining, everything that exists in the world has its spiritual entity that powers it, that animates it, that gives it its existence. And we're talking about these forces, these spiritual forces through which this mazal, through which that which flows down to us comes, the physical manifestation of those spiritual forces, according to Ramchal, are the stars. So when we speak about the stars, the influence of the stars, it's not that, oh, the Big Dipper did this. The stars are the physical manifestation of the spiritual forces that send down this, what we call this mazal. And it could be through the stars, meaning through different configurations as they reach, that might affect different situations. Galgalim, they call it Galgalim. However, he is Mesovevet yeah. Galgal. Yeah, yeah. So let's begin with that introduction. Hine, behold, Kvar Be'arnu Bechelek Rishon, we already explained in the first Chelek, Shekol Inyanei HaGishamim, all of the aspects of the physical world, Sharsham Hu Bekochon HaNivdalim, their root, it all emanates from, it all flows from kochot anivdalim. He translates it as transcendental forces, non-physical forces, spiritual forces, spiritual energy that works its way down. Anything that exists in the physical world has its spiritual root, foundation, 
power source underpinning whatever term you want to use. The Amnam Sham Mishtar Shim Hainyanim Haela Bihol Hajrachim Shitrichim Lishtar Resh. There is the Shoresh. There is rooted all of these things that exist. Bihol Hajrachim in all aspects Shitrichim Lishtar Resh. That it, that it needs to have at its root, and then it starts to work its way down. It descends then, and it goes works its way down until it has its actual effect or until it represents in this physical manner. In the tsura, in the form that it needs to be, that it needs to represent. Vihine. Litsorech zu. So the mechanism through which all of these forces work their way down is Hagalgalim Vikoch Vehem. For that have the stars, the planets the stars, the constellations, Shebahem, that through them, Ubisibu Vehem, and through their cycles, Nimshachim Venetakim Kolotam and Yanim works its way down. All of those aspects, Shenishtar Shum, which had their root, the Nizmenu, and are prepared, Lamala, above in the Ruchaniyut, in the spiritual sense. And it works its way down, El Hagashmiyut, to the physical manifestations, presentations, Po Lamata, down here below, the Omdim Po Batsuraha Ruya, and is established here in its Ruui proper, appropriate, fitting manner. Manner. Rabbi. Yes, Susie. I, I was just thinking of an example of what he's talking about, and that is every one of us have what is known as Yehud. And the Yehud itself is not something physical. It's something that is very spiritual. So it's, it works itself, to, yeah, our destiny, our, our job in life. What are we here for? Mm-hmm. And then it comes down over in our form, in our physical body, and it's up to us to fulfill it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And the kohot that we're given, right, that we mentioned before, that is decreed before the child is born in terms of intelligence, in terms of wealth, in terms of strength, is that which is needed for the yiud, for the destiny or the mission, right? Probably mission is better than destiny because destiny is something that will come about no matter what. You can't avoid your destiny, thinking of Lion King, right? But it's not destiny. Right, it is a mission that we need to step up to and to fulfill. The Amnam Minyana Kochavim, the amount of the stars, Umadri Gotayim, and their different levels in the hierarchy of these forces, Luchal Machlokotayim, in all of their divisions, in all their categories. That is what the divine wisdom saw as necessary and proper and fitting in order to to work their way down to this head take, this working its way down into the physical world that we mentioned. Resulting from these kochavim, and again, I don't want to say stars because it's not the stars. It's the physical. It's the spiritual forces embodied by the stars. That is the mechanism that God uses. That through that it flows down to us, resulting from nishpa being influenced, resulting being affected by the kochavim, is this koach hakiyum, this ability to exist. To their respective physical entities that are in their line that that result from them. 
al yidehem netak in yanam mivchinato lamala b'shar Hashem through them is moved from above in the roots el b'chinato lamata down to the physical that is down over here. Rabbi, so, I want to ask you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go easy. I thought that we actually do believe in astrology. I, it's, I know that it's not recommended to to uh, investigate astrology by rabbis and so on, but uh, I recall the story of Abraham looking at the stars and becoming very 100%. upset. Right? And, 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 and was, because he couldn't see. So there yeah. is truth to astrology for those who know how to interpret it, and even that is going to be limited, meaning these spiritual forces do work their way through the physical stars. And for those who can interpret it, they might sometimes get it right, but we'll soon see that it's not binding, right? Right. But, you know, right. the New York Post horoscope, right, is not going to have much <laughs> wisdom or true direction in there, right? But oh, yes. I'm sorry? Or your fortune cookie. Or your fortune cookie. Or your fortune cookie. Correct. <laughs> Correct. You know, but we do have that medrash that Hashem told Avraham, Avram told Abraham, say hachutza, go outside, right. and you'll see that your ko yezarecha, your children will be like your descendants with the stars of the heaven. So the Chazal, the sages say, Avram was told, go outside from your astrology. You saw that Avram will not have a child and he won't you saw that sarai will not have a child and she won't but we are above the stars avraham will sarai will so there is wisdom there there is the ability to see certain aspects there for those who are able to see correctly Correct. which i don't think anybody nowadays can and even that will soon see is pretty much limited is limited to a certain degree uh, yeah and right i i have learned that he said he took him on a different angle from above the stars so he has a different angle on all those galgalim and then he realized right. oh now i see it <laughs> right. or or that he's actually above the stars that he yeah. is that will see the concept ain mazal li yisrael that Israel plugs into a higher source that is above the stars. So we don't need to go, you know, kind of like we take, we plug in directly. We don't have to plug in through this extension cord that works its way down. We plug in at a higher point and therefore we are not affected and bound. But we'll see, he's gonna speak about that. Let's go to Bet, to number okay. two. Rulam od inyan echad. There's another aspect that God established or assigned to these kochavim. But who and that is? Shigam kein inyane mikreha gishamim. So not just the existence, but also events that things that take place. Events that take place. I'll be right back. Keep going. I'm sorry. I have to just make a phone call real quick. I'll be right back, but go ahead. <laughs> okay. Shigam kein inyane mikrei hagishamim. Also, situations, happenings of the physical beings in this physical world. Uma sigehem. And that which will reach us. Acharei shohuchnu lamala. They too are prepared up above. Yimashchu al yidehem, and they work their way down through them, lamata down here to us, ba'otahat sura, shetzrichim lekrot lahem, in exactly the manner that is supposed to take place, exactly what is supposed to happen will happen. Derech mashal, for example, hachayim, life, osher, wealth, chachma, wisdom. Azera, children, the coyotes, all such events of life, happenings of life. They all begin 
are prepared up above in these shirashim, in these roots. V'netakim lamata, and then they work their way down below ba'anafim, down to us, to the extensions of all this, to the branches. But surah ru'uya, in the proper manner, al yidea kochav, through these um, agents, through these intermediaries. Vizeh, and once again, this is v'machlakot yiduot, through different um, areas, machlakot, divisions, or combinations, constellations, which were established for them, and through their specific cycles of these different stars. Yep. And divided amongst them, meaning through the sum total of all of them, comes kola mikrim akorim at the all the happenings all the events all the occurrences that come to the physical beings the nikshua gishamim kulam tachash tutam kafi sidrehem and all the gishamim are all under this control we'll soon see how it's going to be limited of this lit chadesh bahem kafi mashi yushbu mena maracha and the things that come about, the things that come about, that are new things that come about, is all based on what is flowing down from this maracha, from this system. Through the connection that each and every human being has going up to this. However, there are limitations to this now. Vihine, nishtabdu leze haseder kol bnei adam gamkein. This is not just for events that take place in the world, but every human being also is under the influence, nishtabdu, to this seder. Shibud is subjugated, is, is under the aegis of this arrangement and that which take that which is mitchadesh that which happens to a person for a person around a person is all based on this flow from above amnam however kvar efshar it's possible shetivutal toledet hakochavim they can be countermanded. They can be, um, their authority can be uh, revoked or overcome. Mikoach Chazak El Yon Mehem. If there is another spiritual power above them, so that can control that and redirect that. And based on this concept, we have this statement I mentioned before, Ein mazal li Yisrael. There is no mazal. There is no constellation. There is no, I don't want to say luck. There is no automatic flow down li Yisrael, for Yisrael meaning that we plug in at a higher point. You know, it's almost like, you know, you go to a restaurant and there's a maitre d' there. And the maitre d' controls exactly who sits where, who gets what, he's controlling. All the guests need to go through the maitre d'. Until who comes into the restaurant? The owner's son comes into the restaurant. At that point, the maitre d is overridden by the boss. The boss can always override the maitre d, but he doesn't. He granted authority to the maitre d to run the show in his restaurant. It's his show. He can override him anytime he wants, but he grants that, that authority to the maitre d until the boss's son comes in. At that point, the maitre d understands 
that this guest is going to be um, guided by a force that is greater than him. Robin, we just had in Gimel the idea that everything's coming down through these constellations unless they are um, overcome, overruled. Overcome, thank you. By a force that is higher and greater than them. And well, that, that, would yeah. only, that would only be God, right? Correct. Correct. Oh, okay. Or in the system that God set up, a higher root than Oh, like angels them. or something? I'm sorry? Like angels in between or something? For, or... In between, yeah. And that's the concept. A oh. mazal li Yisrael. There is no mazal for Yisrael. And I compared it to a restaurant where all the guests are under the control uh, and the direction of the maitre d', right? And mm -hmm. so one of them calls the owner. He says, look, I have a maitre d' over there. Whatever he says, that's what needs to be done. It, it, it needs to go through the maitre d', mm -hmm. right? Okay. And the maitre d', of course, is carrying out the general the general will of the owner. That's why he's hired. So everyone is under the control of the maitre d until the owner's son walks in. At that point, the maitre d knows that he no longer has the real say over here because this guest, the owner's son, is plugging in to a much higher point. And that's the, right the, the, yeah. that's the point of Ein Mazal Li Yisrael. That we, I, I, Israel, is not bound by this, by these stars, because by these constellations, and again the kochavim, not the stars, but the spiritual forces that manifest themselves in these stars. Linda, I can, I'm going to I'm going to post on the chat exactly where we are. One second, Rabbi, I I have a comment to make uh, when you're ready. Yeah. So I personally understand this a little bit different as far as En Mazali Israel. Okay. We note that you started the lecture by, or the class, by saying that there are things that are going to come on our life, not because of things that we have done, but what was going to flow from heaven to, towards us. And, and, and those things are the Mazal whatever is flowing down here, some of which could be decrees uh, and things that are good or bad that will happen to us. The reason that we don't have luck or flows in Mazali Israel is because we, by our own actions, are able to change the decree or, or the flow by repentance, by tzedakah, by tefillah, by good deeds, and and these these are the things that will change the the whatever decree or flow was was designated to us. So therefore, there's no luck. It's up to us to change it. Mm -hmm. Yes, but but even even we to a certain degree have certain things that are our mazal that flow to us, right? But yes, but we can transcend that through our actions, like you said, shuva, tefillah, tzedakah, right? Ma'avirinus roa ha'gezera. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. So the we plug in to a higher point, and that then overrules, right, anything of the kochavim. Dalid number four. The amnam mishpetei ha'ashpa'a ha'zot shel kochavim. Gamheim Mugbalim. Even that which the Kochavim, and again, we don't mean the stars, we mean the spiritual forces that manifest itself in the stars, its influence is also Mugbalim. It is limited. Gavul is a boundary or a border. It also is limited. Right? It's not running maverick over here. It's only running within the parameters that God set as being fitting for it to have this, this um, ability. Uktsat midracheha. Now, this is very interesting. We discussed in for the horoscope. Uktsat midracheha. 
some of its ways, its pathways, its indications, its signs, no da'im are known or can be known lefi sidrei ha-mabatim according to that which we are our mabat. Mabat is our outlook, our vision, our perception. So if we're talking about these spiritual forces that manifest themselves in the stars, then one can feasibly, if one has the ability, which we don't, but if one has the ability, one can work backwards and see from the stars that which will be coming down, that which is in the pipe on its way down to us or to the world. And that is what is sometimes predicted or understood by the Hovre Shamayim, those who are right, the astrologers. Right, not astronomers, which is purely physical, but the astrologers who try to predict that which is coming to the world through their hovre shamayim, through their understanding of the kochavim and the constellations. Achim, kol amitat sidarei mitgalet baze. Alkain. But even, right, all of the actual order of events and the flow is not low call. It's not, all of it is not revealed by these physical manifestation stars. There's some that can be seen and under right. There's some that can be seen, and if understood, interpreted correctly, they can be based in some truth of what will happen. But not everything is revealed here. Al Cain, therefore, lo yasigo achosim v'kochavim el ktsat me ha'inyanim ha'atidim. Therefore, even those who are successful and skilled in their reading of these signs, lo yasigu ela ketzat, they will only fathom, understand ketzat, a small part of these inyanima atidim, of these future events. The lobish leimut, only part of it, and even that part will not be in its complete fashion. The call chicane. So A, what's shown is limited, and it needs to be properly understood. But even if one does properly understand it, it's a limited glimpse that they're getting. They're getting to see a part of the picture. The call chicane, and certainly taking into account what we had in Parak. In the third uh, paragraph, Chikfar Yesh Bitul Toldotam, that it can be over uh, countermanded, it can be overruled. So even Catch if they're it. reading it correctly, there's no guarantee that that's going to actually work its way down all the way to this world. There might be some interference, some overcoming of that for whatever reason. That's what I was saying, that we can change the decree. The, the, it depends on us. That's why there's no mazal yes. to us. We can yes. we, we, we have control over it. Yes, yes. Kamo shezacharnu, like we mentioned before. Va'al amru chachameinu zichonu levracha. About this, our sage is on a pasuk in Yeshayahu. Let's get that pasuk for us. It's Yeshayo 47.13, which speaks about, it says as follows, Nil eight, Barov atzatayich. You've gotten worn out, weary, from all of the counsel that you've been given. 
Yamdu Navi Yoshiuch. Right, let's see right, Chobre Shamayim. Let's see those who are the Chobre Shamayim, those who look into the heavens and peer into the constellations and make their predictions. Yeah? Let's see them get up and save you, those who look towards the heavens. Hachuzim Bakochavim, those who look up at the stars that lets them know what will be coming in the future, what will be coming your way. Modi'im lechedashim, those who try to let you know that with the new things, that which is coming, may asher yavo'u elecha, from that which yavo'u will come alayich, will come upon you. On that verse in Yeshaya, Chazal, the sages say, may I share from that which, the call I share, not all that which, but rather from that which, right? So A, they get a small glimpse, not the whole glimpse. B, it needs to be interpreted properly. And even that small part which they see, they don't even get to see the completeness of that small part. And it gets overruled based by Israel, based on our actions. But there is some yes. wisdom that can be garnered there. Again, not from the New York Post horoscope, but from those who at one point actually knew this wisdom, which I would say for the most part, we no longer have. But the most important part, I think, is to realize that we are not bound by that. And Ein Mazali Israel, we can plug into a higher source based on our actions, based on the way that we act, the way the things that we do, we could plug in to a higher source than all of that. I have a question. Yes, Uzi. Rabbi, you keep mentioning the New York Post horoscope. I should <laughs> tell you, I lived in New York for approximately 18 years. I commuted from Long Island to the city for about seven years. Those days, I would read three full newspapers, the New York Times, <laughs> the, the Wall Street Journals, and the New York Post. I would never read the horoscope. My question is, should I believe dear Abby? Abby has, ha has had a lot of wisdom. <laughs> Abby has had a lot of wisdom. You know, a lot of these dear Abbies and all these, they I think they were most All right. Actually, if you look, if you look into it, right, who were they? I think they were mostly Jewish women. Yeah, I see, I also grew up yeah. in New York. And when you rode the subway, it was a matter, especially this is before Giuliani helped clean up the city a bit. It was a yes. matter of self-preservation to make sure that you don't meet eyes with anybody else on the subway. Exactly. Once and the way to do it was to read it. And you yeah. know where it's going to go. So the Absolutely safest thing to right. do was buy yourself a newspaper and sit there like this until your station <laughs> came out. Then get up, walk out, and... Uh, Shalom al Yisrael. I I vow I I vouch for what the rabbi said. It's so correct. Yeah. So you correct. Have be, you have to be careful. I, I tell the story. A friend of mine was once was once driving the subway, and uh, and he broke this cardinal rule. And his eyes locked with somebody. Uh -huh. This big guy saunters over to him, and says, "Who are you looking at?" And my friend said, a friend I have yet to meet. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy cracked up and, uh, and, and, and kept on walking. And he went away. <laughs> That's good. All right, guys. We will call it over here. All right. All right. Thank yes, you very much. Koch, Rabbi. This was really here. fun. Pick up here next week. Okay. Nice to, nice to see the Nice to see Robin Hood. And nice to see you all, guys. Yes, good seeing you. Uzi. good to have you back. I, I have and one more have question one for Dalit. And then yeah. we get to Chela Gimel, the third part. 
which is I have a question for Dalit. Inspiration and prophecy. One question for Dalit. Yes. Dalit, did you did you realize when the rabbi read the word zera, he translated it as children? Seed. Okay. I didn't. Yeah, I, I I get your point. All right, just to, just to make because I was thinking about you when he translated it to children, then I was thinking of you. <laughs> All right, great. We shall go off, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Rabbi. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night, Bye. Good night. Hello. Hello, Alex. Good. Let me just close this up. Rabbi Siner, hello. Oh, you want to... Any other wanderers? Hi, you hear me? Yeah. I think you're good. still recording. How are you doing? Oh, good point. Thank you for reminding me that. <laughs>